All right, hi guys. We're going to talk about a few uh, new features on the French's performance fuel systems, mainly R32 GTR, which is the same tank in the Stager, C34 Stager actually, as well. Um, this is the new design in tank search tank, which uh, will replace the current range. It's a nice pot which goes inside the fuel tank. Just so I can cheat because I've cut it in half. So we can have a look at the features and how things are going. Alright, we've got a new fuel level sender. Very straightforward installation. A little plate here. The cutout matches the sensor. And you push it forward to lock it into position. And as a backup, there's a little cable tie in the kit which goes behind it. which prevents it from ever popping out. It just physically can't come out. Just cut that nice and tidy. Now, that might sound obvious, but the cabling, we don't want it all tangled up around the sender or your gauge won't work. I know it sounds silly, but trust me. To go inside the tank, so this is the front of the car. If you're looking inside the boot, you'll be looking this way. Cut the fuel tank so you can see exactly what's going on. Easy as, go through the hole. And down on the inside, you can see the factory fuel pump holder. Let's take this out of the way. So we've replicated the mounting to suit the little holder. You align it, and you're going to push it until it clicks into position. So that's, that's installed there. To remove it, you just pull it back out. This is why there's a cutout section here for your fingers. It gives you something to grab onto, and you can just pop it back out. So, as your tank fills up, the float will go up, and that will just work with your factory gauge, or you can uh, calibrate it into aftermarket dashes. Talking about dashes, it's actually, I get people asking me for the values. Sometimes, to be honest, it's, it's a lot more accurate to actually start with an empty tank and set up your calibration as you pull the fuel in so you can split it up in like 10 liter or 15 liter increments and as you pull it in pour it in sorry record the value and start inputting your own curve into your digital display it will be a lot more accurate because this is not a perfect cube all right so that's the new fuel system kit for those cars and you'll notice that it comes kind of collapsed in the box and this moves that's purely for packaging and and uh, just keeping everything together in the kit. You can undo those rods. They will unscrew from the hat. So you can separate the billet hat from the pot. I'll explain why. Um, well, I've got the hat here. There's quite a few features. You've got your power terminals there. You've got four pins. They can handle 25 amp each. They're quite decent. Got a three pin connector there for your fuel level. You'll find it's already got a tail which matches the fuel sender. So, plug and play operation, very easy. Take the guesswork out for you. Uh, in terms of wires here, we can power either two pumps by going two positives, two negatives. Or you can also go up to four pumps by using the four wires that's four positives and using the ground point on the hat. You can see that, that section where there's no anodizing. It's a nice raw finish. You can actually screw terminals there to do all your negative grounding through the hat. So this point will then go straight to your chassis and this point to all the negatives on your pumps. It allows you to run a lot of different options. And we've got a feed port, and this one is a dash 8, and a bar for the return. This will just return fuel back inside the pot. These fittings can be interchanged to all sorts, barbs, dash 6, dash 8, dash 10, whatever you want. And the same thing on the outside. You can actually, the only finger type on this one. We've opted for M18 by 1.5 threads, so you can just get whatever fitting combination you want. You can start with factory lines and upgrade in the future. 
You can do anything you want. All right, we'll have a look at the pot. So the pot can actually be pulled apart. Squeaky on the underlying. We've got long bolts there. Holding the pot together. We've got a top ring. We've got a bottom section. So I'll pop it out. It's probably gonna be a bit rough. Quite a nice snug finish. You can use a rubber mallet, a little bit of timbo or something, just to pop it out. Um, yeah. Everything's made in Australia, proudly. So this is what's inside. Now, what does it do? We've got a hole in here, which is designed to house a little lift pump. You can actually use quite a different a lot of different pumps you can use, the AEM 340s or Walbro 255. Um, personally, I like using the Peerberg 255 litre an hour lift pump. These are they're actually lift pump. They're not designed to do anything else than just flow fuel. Uh, they're great because they flow a fair bit. They're multi-fuel compatible. And they only draw about two amps. So you don't even know they're on. It's, it's just awesome. Um, so yeah, we've designed it so the cradle will hold it in, pokes out the bottom, and then you can put your filter sock on the bottom, but we'll do it, we'll do it at the end. Um, to hold it in, it's very, very straightforward, the kit comes with clamps, it's just the easiest slash most compact way to do it, because uh, you'll see it gets a little busy in there. So what we do is just put the clamp around the pump. The best is to work out where your worm drive is going to end up. You don't want it to interfere with the pot or interfere with anything. All right, so we've got our little lift pump secured in the cradle. Uh, like I said before, this will end up on the bottom here. Quite a snug little filter. It's great, it's got a little feet on there so the thing can sit down the bottom and it's not going to get squashed. It's actually really well designed with a little screen there. In the kit, there's a little elbow like this. So that goes on the outlet of the pump because you want the fuel to stay in the pot and not shoot straight up. That would be just a little bit unproductive there. So once the pot's on there like this, the fuel will just get sucked from the bottom and then just swirl inside and overflow out the top. And now we've got spots for two main pumps. Uh, those Walbro 460s or the 525s, they're the weapon of choice. They work really well. They've been reliable for years, quite affordable. They just tick all the boxes. Um, they do draw a fair bit of current, but here's what it is. So, little trick. There's little custom little socks there, nice and compact. Actually go on this way. We're not going to use the retainer in this application. We don't want the sock to stick out like this because it just gets in the way. We're going to put it 180 and pretty much you push it on and just mimic the shape of the pump. Just very straightforward. So when it goes inside the pot, nice and compact, it doesn't get caught in anything, it just sits nice and low. Uh, the good little thing. Same thing, you get your clamps. What we tend to do is don't put your worms against each other, kind of replicate the order that you've done before, and we'll just do a triangle of all the worms facing the same orientation. We've got all our pumps installed in the little cradle. There's a few things you want to make sure is that we've got three bolt holes. We want to make sure nothing is in the way. So when you look at it here, whether it's the little tab on the sock, whether it's the clamp, we want to make sure that when that comes down, it's not touching anything. See here, right on the clamp, we can't have that. 
see here, kind of good, but it's going to touch on there. So I put them there on purpose so I could show you, just very easy to overlook. And then you're there fighting with the ring and you just can't put it on. So I'm just going to go and rotate them around out of the way. And we can go and assemble the block. Right, so this is what it should look like. As you can see, I've aligned each drive on the clamp with the flats on the cradle. And they all follow each other. Keeps it nice and compact. Everything down inside the tube and no just interference with the bolt holes. So we're really good there. Another thing I've tried to do is to keep the pump outlets as far away from each other as possible. Like don't clock the pump so they're sort of close to each other. The reason being is we're gonna have to put hoses on there and the hoses need to come out and loop and back into the hat. So we need the space to have everything so it's not all jammed in there. It, it gets pretty busy inside that pot. So I'm not going to put the hoses on just yet because I'll just show you how the rest goes together. So the pot will slide over. You can see the base got like a little machine step so that needs to go and key in inside the pot. It can be fairly tight or snug. Don't worry too much about it, we'll just line it up. Now the top ring, same thing, it's got a little step to align with the tube. Now the key is you need to align these holes with the matching threaded holes down the bottom for these bolts to sandwich the whole thing together. Now the trick is to sort of nip it together. Don't just go swinging it's, it's only thin aluminium it's not designed to hold the cylinder head on it's designed to just keep it together you need to actually go around and make sure that everything is sort of clipped in so you might have to push it you might have to tap it a little bit the best is to always check that it's aligned and you keep nipping it up as you go which will help if you put it on all crooked and you keep tightening it it's it's just not going to work out well It's a bit squeaky with the anodizing, that's normal. Usually that's the amount of force that I'm putting on there. We don't need it that tight. Put it all together. Just check that everything is clipped in properly. Happy with that. Can do a final check. The best is you can actually visually see that every bolt sort of nice and seated down. Right, we'll worry about the hoses and the wiring later. Um, it, it needs to be done first, but I'm just going to keep talking about the features. Now that's our little pot with two pumps, the lift pump down the bottom. That needs to go inside the tank. But first, I'm going to attach it back onto the hat. So obviously we would have that terminated to suit the pumps you're using. In this case we have a Warbro 460s. Put the connectors on there. Connect, connect. All this will then get pushed back inside the pot. I'll just push it like this for now. Now where the hat goes doesn't really matter, but it is a lot easier if you can have the two main pumps sitting here and the lift pump on the back. It's just to do with how the hoses are gonna be onto the Y fitting and onto the center port. It just works out better. So have this bolt that's between the two main pumps facing forward. And all you do is you gotta start the thread inside the hat and you just screw it in until it bottoms out. It doesn't have to be tight, don't get pliers onto it or anything, just you wind it until it stops and you repeat for all three corners. Well, probably shouldn't call them corners, it's a round thing. 
make sure the nuts are not stopping you from screwing it in. So we want it to stop. Visually you can see that the hat is kind of equally spaced. If the thing was like this when it's fully tightened, you probably have a problem. I would definitely go back and check. So that's what our little nugget looks like. Now the next step is to make sure that this is actually going to sit at the right height. We've designed them to suit these tanks, however, you never know what's been done in the past. The tank could be deformed, could have been a hit, uh, could have been damaged, could have different straps that's actually squashing it a certain way. So you, you just need to check. You need to check how it sits in your tank. So I'll show you what the go is. When this goes inside, yeah, what's the fitment like? It's pretty good, eh? So, as you can see, our pickup pump is almost, almost touching the bottom. Like, it's pretty much on it at the moment. I wonder why. Well, kind of got designed that way. Now, you'll notice I didn't put the fuel tank seal yet. If you don't install the seal, it allows you to work out whether your kit is bottoming out or not. I'll show you an example. Let's say you have interference for whatever reason. See the gap I've got here? Then you know. So at least when the pot is at full hang and you drop it in and you can touch the flange, you know that the moment you insert that, that will give you about 4 mil worth of clearance, which is acceptable in my mind. Now, for some reason, if you've got, I don't know, let's say when that's bottomed out, this sits way up, well, you can actually unscrew the rods to lengthen the assembly so it sits lower. That's easily done. Now, another way to do it is to physically measure the depth of your tank. Here we have 290 on the dot. You can measure it in a couple of spots, because as you can see, if it's sitting on the plate, it's gonna have slightly different spots. So just give you a rough idea and an average measurement, which you can then check here and adjust suit. I mean, you might order one of these kits for a custom-made fuel tank you've made. You might have made an aluminium fuel cell that's roughly the same as factory. Well, you can still use the kit. It's just adjusted to suit. So once you're happy with the measurements, two things. The top nut will go against the hat to stop the, the rod from being you know, vibrate loose or unscrew itself. So you go around the three. Yep. And then the bottom ones, easy, you just wind them down all the way. And just snip them up. Check. And now the unit is just solid, it's not going to be wobbling about and everything. Seal. We supply these seals with those in tank search tanks because uh, I don't really like the Nissan ones, I find them quite annoying to work with. These are just a nice setup. You got a nice sealing face little lip on the side, it's super easy to install. You can put them on first, you can put them on after, whatever. Easy. And then, in she goes.
you're not there battling with the seal that wants to roll and try and lube it up or anything. This is a great little setup. So once the kit's in, you can align whichever way. Factory lock ring goes back on it. And if you're sick of hurting your fingers doing these or using screwdrivers, you can get the FPG tooling for it, which is designed to sit over it. And you can use a half inch ratchet to tighten it up. Especially ideal in your S14 or your R33, R34s, where you've got to try to reach inside the boot. It's pretty hard to get to. You've got, ah, oh, it's just painful. Whereas this one, we just bang it on, undo, pull it out, finished. Saves a lot of time. Good. All right, so that's now set up, ready to go inside the tank. You need to make sure you got your sender wiring hanging out. The best is to put it to the side, sort of try and hold it on the side there. Get the hanger in. It's a bit snug, but you'll get it through. Or not. That's right. So I'll, I'll show what I'm doing. Over here, you'll need to connect the wiring. As you go in, make sure that it all goes back inside. I don't know if you can see through there. The wiring is inside, it's connected. That is free to go wherever. You can just sit there, it's not going to get in the way. It's the same thing on the way out. As you grab it, the best is to not pull it, otherwise you can't get the connector passed. You need to go and get the connector first. Here. To be able to undo it. And then the work can come out. Try to maximize the size to try and get the biggest capacity we could get. Plus, you know, you're limited by the pump size and everything. So it is snug, but it's by design.